with me as I make sure that all my streaming is going to plan. Let's have a little look, just as anyone joins who wants to join. Finding that this version of the software I'm using tends to skip some of the services sometimes, software which is a bit odd. Okay, that volume's working. So it tends to, yeah, some of the streaming channels I go to tend to be a little bit late to the scene, but it looks like they're all up there now. So uh, as I say, welcome to the craft room. My name's Julianne Richards and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator in southern Tasmania, Australia. Um, yeah, a few minutes early. I just thought I'd do um, my prize draw before we actually get uh, get crafting today. Um, I had a lovely order from my beautiful customer, Gwenda, customer and friend, Gwenda, um, during the week, and she uh, earned four numbers from my rustic Christmas countdown calendar. So here's the four numbers that she chose. So we're going to open each of the little envelopes and see the prizes that she won. So as mentioned previously, uh, 75 any order over $75 um, for as long as I have numbers remaining will earn you a pick of the calendar. Uh, and once you've uh, picked the number, you will get the prize from inside the envelope. So let's see, Gwenda's got four lovely envelopes to choose here. So let's see what she's got. This is number 12. And she has won a free fun fold class. There you go, Gwenda. There's your uh, free fun fold class there. Put that there. What I might do is I will write Gwenda's name on that so I don't forget. Turn it over. So, Gwenda, keep in mind you've got a free fun fold class and you can redeem that at any, any time over the next forever probably not leave it too long or we'll both forget um, a ten dollar product credit so next time you ring me and pop an order in we'll make sure we take ten dollars off it so ten dollar product credit and, uh, and number 18 congratulations you have won oh another ten dollar product credit so that's twenty dollars there Gwenda you've got free next time you place an order we've got the brand new catalog coming in january so that could be a great time to cash in your twenty dollars i better write your name on the back of that as well and the last one is number two so as i say every 75 dollars you spend with me till we run out of numbers uh, and you will get to choose a number from the cart tree as well a handmade card there you are so that's your number two is a handmade card so i'll pop that in the post for you as well so there we are so that's gwenda you've won a handmade card twenty dollars in product credits and a free fun fold class so that's a lovely little prize haul there congratulations gwenda so keep note of that i'll write that i'll write notes about that in my little book so i don't forget as well just wanted to share something with you guys before we start as well. That's why I signed on a wee bit early so I could get all this stuff out of the way. I was fortunate enough in the last Stamping Up fine, um, year, which ends in the end of September, to make the top 10 uh, our demonstrators in Australia. So that's just a, a country by country thing. So I actually made top eight. I was the eighth. Um, most successful demonstrator in Australia for the for the year and as a part of that I got this gorgeous card from um, Stamping Up in America and um, it's lovely there it's got a lovely message on the inside but that not that a gorgeous card it's lovely colors and it had a little gift card with it and I can feel that that's actually been personally signed by Shelley and Sarah so they're the the owners of, of Stamping Up so I think that's pretty special and a cute little um, leather or false leather pouch, which is really cute. And inside is my, and I'm really proud, I'm going to wear it with pride. Uh, I've got my overall Achievers badge, which is really, really nice. So I've got my five-year badge and my Achievers badge now. So I'm going to wear those next time I go to a, a stamping up event, which is, well, next one is March, isn't it? So... Excellent. So I just wanted to share that with you. 
I don't think I've ever received a card signed by the owners and CEO of a company for uh, achieving something. So it's Stamping Up is a wonderful company to work for. So I, I um, strongly recommend it. Okay, so that's my little boast there. Now let's do some actual crafting. This is what you've signed on for, not to see. Oh, there's a bug. Go away, bug. You don't want to craft with me. Today I'm going to craft with the Simply Sparkling Bundle. So it's a cute little bundle, a um, little bit different if you're you know, sick of the flowers and the whatever that we tend to have a lot of these days. Probably something for um, younger people if you're making cards for teenagers and children and stuff like that would be a good one. Um, Got to forgive the American slant on um, the sentiments. Uh, obviously they call their what we call in Australia a soft drink or a can of soft drink that's called soda and pop over there. So a lot of the sentiments are a play on that soda and pop, um, but you know probably not all that relevant, but there's a, a few there that we can definitely use, which is great. Um, got a can, uh, a um, soft drink can with a sort of fizzy swirl there, a few sentiments, some bubbles, and I really love this. The reason I actually bought it, more than anything was the little cute fruit there. So I'm going to make one card with the, the cute little fruit uh, as well. Uh, and I'll use the, the um, soft drink can uh, in, a, in, in a card as well. So, and it comes with the dies. The dies obviously cut out all the little fruit, the can um, and uh, all the sort of bits and bobs that go with that. Um, but it also has quite a cute, oh, so it's, uh, it has a quite cute sort of bubble setup, which I haven't actually used yet, but I'm sure I will. Um, and each of the fruit has a die that cuts out the, the stamp, but it also has a embossed sort of smaller image. So you've got a little embossed um, strawberry there and a little piece of lime or um, orange, whatever you want, a lemon and a peach. So, yeah, cute little die set. And I'll, I'll show you how I've, I've used that. Okay, so as I mentioned, on the box or in the intro, there are two cards we're doing today. I'm going to I've cut everything already. I'm going to sort of move past through them fairly quickly, um, mostly because it's my mum's 82nd birthday today and um, we've got a uh, big day of celebrations planned, as you can imagine. That one's gone bent up. I'll have to do something. So we're going to do two cards. One, this is the first one with the little fruit that I taught, spoke about. Um, I haven't gone too artistic with the um, colouring. I just wanted them to have that sort of cartoon, sort of um, uh, sort of uh, almost childlike sort of image to them. So I've used all the fruit there for this one. So that's one. And the first one we're going to do is a wee bit more complicated actually put together the can as a shaker card so there we are so um, obviously the can is stamped on there and die cut I've got a window sheet in there and inside this one I actually popped those I'll go a bit closer so you can see I popped those little die cut fruits which I don't not like but I'm going to put something different on the inside of it this time I'm using the um, Mary what is it Mary Bold and Bright designer series paper behind there um, as I said, you can use that way past Christmas because it's just got these really nice bright dots on it. Uh, and I'm using the splatters and stripes embossing folder there as well. So I'll bring that out and you can have a look at that. So that's from the annual catalogue. So let's do this one first. I'll pop it up so I can see what I'm doing. I always pop my cards up in a little holder as I so I can watch and make sure that I do the right thing but you don't see that you think I'm doing it all by you think I'm doing it all by ear but I'm not or by memory okay so we've got a card base our normal size card base or my normal size card base um, we've got a sheet of the um, Mary bright Mary and bold designer series paper see this is the other side was the little Christmas trees but I'm going to use the dots now the colours in the dots are sort of, I think it's crushed curry, flirty flamingo, um, berry burst, might be mango, me uh, melon mambo, and um, yeah, and uh, soft sorbet. No, sweet sorbet. So I'm going to use sweet sorbet as the red in this one. 
Okay, so I've got a little smaller piece of um, sweet sorbet and a smaller piece of white. And I think, oh, and a piece of window sheet. I think that's all I've got and all I need. Yes, I think so. Okay, so let's get started. Now, as I mentioned, the card is my normal size card and I noticed it's actually, looking at it here, I've actually scored it slightly off, off centre so it's slightly bigger on one side than it should be. So I'll just trim that down. There we are, that's better. Okay, so there we are. So first of all, I'm just simply going to add our designer series paper. I'll just grab some glue. Now, I got up this morning into the craft room and realised I'd left the lid off my glue all night. So I'll be so oh no, it comes out. I thought it would probably be clogged up and dry, but it's coming out, so that's okay. So we're just going to pop that straight on there. Definitely, definitely not just for Christmas, this designer series paper. So keep in mind we have our last chance sale happening at the moment, our last chance um, promotion. Um, the items from the, well, most of the items from the mini catalogue will um, retire on the 4th of January. There is a list of a few items that will continue on later and if you're interested in knowing what they are, please reach out. Um, but if you can assume that most of them are retiring early January, um, you're probably not far wrong. And some... Uh, have been reduced up to 60%. Um, so pop online and check those. All the all the on-sale items are listed on online if you're interested in popping on and grabbing a bargain. Okay, so I'm just going to put that card base aside for a wee sec and I'll grab my white piece. So on this one, I'm going to stamp the, um, the bottle, the, the tin, the can. I'll get there in a minute, the can, just in black ink. Big block. I wanted a nice big block. Where'd it go? And I'll grab my black ink. I cleaned my table with my orange oil. I don't know if you guys use this in your craft room for all your gluey splodges. I cleaned it because I had glue everywhere, obviously. And um, it's really sticky now, so I'm going to have to bring in a cloth and embellishment there. Um, I'll bring in a cloth and make it less sticky but everything's sticking at the moment. I'll see how this stamps just without a foam mat. I've got a foam mat just to my left but I can see if I go without it. I'm going to just stamp this just smack bang in the middle of our white layer. There we go. That's not too bad. We'll keep that one. It's a nice image. It's, it's, it's different. It's not it's not our usual, you know what I mean? It's not our usual flowers and all that sort of thing. So then I'm going to grab my sweet sorbet ink and I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to grab the, the sort of the fizzy swirl from the stamp set. Also going to pop the sentiment in here as well so that's really cool I like that I like that sort of swirly effect I think we could probably use that for backgrounds for lots of things and I'm going to grab birthday wishes from the stamp set and in black I'm going to pop that just in the middle of our tin our can Now, as a shaker card, all the little shaky things will be in there, but you'll be able to see the birthday wishes through the window envelope, uh, the window sheet, which will be good. Okay, so that is our can. Okay, so now I'm going to grab the piece of um, sweet sorbet. Now, it's going to sit over the top of our can. I've made them pretty much the same size, as you can see. So that can will be sitting in the middle here. 
So I need to die cut it from my piece of sweet sorbet. So I'll grab the, I think I'll go through my mini. Yes, we'll go through my mini. That's pretty cool. Oh, if I can get my mini past the computer, past the microphone, past everything. I'll grab the can die. Actually, I should have done it the other way around, shouldn't I? I should have actually die cut it first and then positioned the can so that it was in the hole. I think that's why how I did the first one. But because I've got them so similarly in size, I think I'll be right if I just go as close to the middle as I can. I designed this card last weekend so it's a wee bit uh, it's not as fresh in my memory as it should be so which way up is it that way yep okay so we'll pop that i'll do a bit of a guesstimate in the middle ish as i say i probably should have die cut it first and then stamped through if it doesn't work if i'm not close enough i'll just flip this piece of the piece of white over and stamp it again i think i'll be right It's the joy of handmade. How many times a day do I say that? Okay, so we've removed the centre out of that one. I'll make sure that it... Yeah, no, that's cool. That flicks through okay. That's fine. I'm happy with that. Okay, so we'll pop that aside. We'll get rid of that die for the moment. Now, as I say, I have now that outer surround. I have popped that through the... Oh, what is it? Stripes and Splatters embossing folder. Now that's a small one that can actually go through my small um, embossing machine. It's actually made specially for the small embossing machines. But I don't think I've got my embossing plate handy. Let's see if I can quickly find it. Apologies, guys. I just moved away again. I do need my special embossing plate for my small machine and I don't no, I don't know where it is, but I'll bring in my big machine. Just bear with me. I'll just swap over the plates. I usually have all my plates really handy and close by, but I haven't got them for that, so that's all right. We'll swap over to the big machine. And we'll pop that through. So the stripes and splatters, you can see the splatters on there. I thought they were really cool because they look like sort of like the fizzy, you know, the fizzy drink sort of splashing out, which I thought was pretty cool for this design. So let's just pop that through. To find the plates to my little machine, it'd be good to be able to use it when I use the small folders. I know they're in a drawer here somewhere. Who knows? Who knows, Julianne? Okay, so there we are. We've got the, the splatters on that outside. I think I actually prefer it that way. Let's do it that way. Tidy up a bit. Okay, so now we're going to pop. Now I've got to remember the order of events here. It's very important. We're going to pop the window sheeting on now. So here's a piece of window sheeting. It's just big enough to cover the hole. Clean it off a bit. It's got some hair on it. We're just going to pop that onto the reverse side and I'm just going to use some double-sided tape just for ease and quickness. You could use snail, you could use glue, you could use whatever you like. Yes, so we're taking mum for lunch today for her birthday to a, a vineyard. It's about half an hour east-ish of where we live. So we'll have a nice little drive through the vineyards to get there, which will be nice. 
So, um, yeah, looking forward to that. We've been there a few times. We took Steve there for his 60th and had a wine tasting, which was really nice. So if you ever come to Tassie and you want to go to a vineyard, I can definitely recommend this one if you want to reach out. If you're ever down here and you want to go, just reach out and I'll tell you the name of it. Um, it's, a, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a really nice little, um, really nice little setup. You can have lunch um, weekends. They do pizzas and things like that. Um, you know, it's really it's nice. Okay, so there's what our um, uh, window card's going to look like. So the next step is to, and I always forget the steps of this. The next step is to set that up so that you can pop the. We can pop the little um, uh, little shiny things in there. I'm actually going to do this one slightly differently. I'm not going to pop the little fruit in. I'm going to pop some sequins and things so it's um, a little bit shinier. So to pop the sort of make the little dish for our um, for our uh, shaker card I'm using my adhesive strips so they're basically just a dimensional but like a big long skinny dimensional so I'm going to use that and I basically just pop that around the edge and they're nice and flexible you see so you can you can shape them round round corners and things like that and keep them nice and close to the edge of your cutout so that your your little jingly bits, um, that's what I've decided to call them from now on. Your little shaker elements stay nice and visible. If I take it as close as possible, I think this single um, adhesive strip should go most of the way around. It did yesterday. Let's see how it goes today. Oh, so close. So close, but no cigar. I've got a tiny little bit where it hasn't met. So I'm just going to have to use a little end bit just to plug that gap. Yeah. Okay, so in here, I will pop the little sparkles that I'm going to use. So you see, we've formed like a little dish for it there. So what are we going to use? I thought we would use some loose silver sequins, really always nice. And I thought I'd sprinkle in a couple of loose daisy embellishments as well just to give it a little bit of colour. So a little bit of combo of both there. So some sequins. Oop, I think I'm too carried away. So sequins don't go on trees. And just a couple of little... Oh, just a couple of little daisies as well. Daisies don't grow on trees either. So I'll just put a few in there just to break up the silver a bit. Here we go. So that's our little insides there. Now I have to be very clever and seal it in with the jar, with the can. There we go. So there we are. So that's that's the shaker there. So as I say, when they're all down the bottom, you can see the birthday wishes through it, but they've got that lovely glisteny, shaky thing happening as well. So that's our shaker card. Now, all I need to do now is to attach that to our card base, and I can do that with the glue. Because I've made that white piece nice and big so it doesn't need embellishments around the edge or dimensionals around the edge. And I'm going to pop it slightly off centre or off straight. We get to see a little bit more of our beautiful colours in that way. So there we are. So that's our, that's my can. Take a card with our sequins and daisies inside. Okay, cute one. Uh, compare that to the original. So as I said, with the original, I actually used those little die cuts from the from the dies. So the little die.
uh, fruit so it's up to you you could choose whichever I just wanted to give it a try with some normal more traditional sequins and things but uh, I like both I like both there we are okay so that is card number one so hopefully you like that one well it's a nice little change from um, a lot of the standard cards that you've seen that I have seen using the, the um, sparkling simply sparkling um, stamp set okay so let's do our cute little fruit so we're going to do this one here here we go they are so cute anyway so to, to make this one I have a lemon lime twist <laughs> you can see I've already done some of my fruit a lemon lime twist card base I thought since we've got a lime in our stamp set we had to use lemon lime twist card base I've got then a layer of white Layer, just a layer of white to go there to break it up a wee bit and then I'm using the where is it here we go I thought I hadn't cut it but I had the um this is from the annual catalogue the the one that goes with the balloons the um, bright and beautiful designer series paper and again I've just picked one with a white wash or a sort of a lemon lime twist wash look the other side has got sort of hashes on it sort of thing so that's going to pop just on top very very simple just layering it up nothing too amazing there now, apart from spending some time doing the coloring it's not much really time wise with this card it's nice and quick and then I'm going to pop that onto the card now, as far as the sentiment goes, I haven't even really cut a sentiment box. I'm just actually going to stamp the sentiment onto the designer series paper. So, yeah, mega easy. I wanted something nice and big and blocky, so I've used this nice big thanks. And that's from the... <coughs> excuse me, I've got a slightly hoarse throat. That's from one of my favourite stamp sets, which is in the annual catalogue, The Seasons of Chic. Just really love this one it's all year round there's a snowflake there's shells there's flowers there's leaves it's really got something for each of the seasons but i think the the, the sentiments are a real highlight as well so look at that one if you haven't got that one in your collection it's in the annual catalog as i said okay so i'm just going to do my sentiment in black ink i'm not even getting too carried away with the colors because i think the fruit is colorful enough just as I say, just down the bottom there. Here we are. I don't know whether I've gone a bit lower for that one. I might have gone a bit lower, but anyway, that's fine. And I have die cut and started to colour some of the cute fruit. I don't know what that's there for. I don't know why I've got that one. Anyway, so I've got, oh, I know, I wanted to show you something. I've got a strawberry and I've Coloured that with sweet sorbet, a lemon, which is a combination of lemon lime twist and daffodil delight. Got cute little cherries, so they are cherry cobbler and lemon um, lemon lime twist, and a lime, which is obviously light and dark lemon lime twist. So that's the four. And what I did, this one, I tried to make it look like a whole segment of orange. I want it to be an orange, so I wanted to like the whole orange. But basically, all I did was stamp two halves, lined them up together, and stamped them. So I got the whole there. A little bit of a gap there, but you won't notice that once I've got it coloured. So let's get colouring. I've got my blends here. Oh. And I'll put the lid on my glue. I don't want to leave it off for another 24 hours. I've got my blends here, so let's just do some quick colouring of these ones and then we'll be ready to pop them on the card. So this is my dark sweet sorbet. So this is my strawberry. As I say, I'm not going to win any prizes for colouring this. I'm not doing any light and dark or shading or anything like that. I'm just going for the blocky, which, you know, just blocky cartoon type colouring here. My cherries will be cherry cobbler. And it's gone a bit funny at the end there, so I'll use the 
texture in. So cherries just have to be cherry cobbler, don't they? That's there. The lemon will be daffodil delight. I suppose you could make it a green and you could pretend that it's a lime, but I'm making this one a lemon because I've already got a lime there. And the, the orange, I thought I'm going to make it a combination of dark pumpkin pie and light pumpkin pie. So the light pumpkin pie will be inside in the segments. And I'm leaving the pith, I suppose it would be, strictly speaking, there's a bit in between the segments. And around the inner edge, I'm going to leave that white. So I want the darker pumpkin pie up ah, there, darker pumpkin pie for the rind on the outside. So bring all these closer to I'll bring this one closer so you can have a look in a minute. I realise I have my camera quite far away today. And I was going to put something here. Yeah, um, just I've got a little bit of dark wild wheat just for the pips. For the seeds there. Okay, so I'll just pop those on the card and bring them close. Oh, I haven't done the leaves. The leaves of the various plants of fruit, I'm going to use my dark lemon lime twist just as the green and I'm sort of being simple coloring like this I don't like to introduce too many wild colors so you know the same color for all the leaves same color for um, similar colors for the other fruit okay so there we are I'll just pop them on there so you can see them colored and you can probably see why I was so attracted to these little images. They're just so cute. They're just, you know, simple colouring, just plain pencil lines, but very, very cute. I think the same reason they appeal to me, the same reason as the um, taco one appeals, just that sort of almost cartoon-like drawing. Okay, so all we need to do is just add these to the front of the card, and this one's done. I'm going to start with the orange as sort of like the central focal point. It's there, and then I can build around it. There we are. And a lemon. And then a strawberry. And my lime. Another strawberry. And I love those little, oh, I'm missing a lemon here. And that strawberry over here. I'm trying not to be too symmetrical, but I seem to have done it, haven't I? And the other lemon, just pop it at the front. My husband goes mad at me because I always need things to be symmetrical. Not mad at me, he laughs at how everything has to be the same either side. And I try, but everything ends up that way. So there we are. And these cute little cherries, I'm going to pop them on a, a dimensional just to give them a bit of height. Have I got it? I think this one needs a little dimensional just on those leaves to support them. Okay, 
And there we are. I'm just going to pop a bit of bling on them. Isn't that cute? <laughs> and it's got nothing much to do with anything theme-wise, but it's just cute. Okay, so I'm going to use just my good old favourite iridescent gems just to give it a little bit of bling. So we'll pop those around. Here we are. So cute. It is cute fruit, Maggie. You're very right. Very cute fruit. And I love it. Yeah, that's good. So I love the bright colours of that one. I just love the simplicity of the of the images and the fact that you could just basically make that for just about anything. There's no particular occasion that it lends to. There's no even no particular person. You could just give that to anyone. Male, female, anyone. Okay, so that's our two cards today. I'm going to keep playing with this bundle because I really would like to sort of use it to its best um, advantage, you know, its best, um, as best I can and use it to uh, to show you lots of possibilities. But there's just two. There's just two I came up with when it first arrived on my doorstep during the last week or so. Um, and hopefully you like those. So really cute little shaker, probably good for a teenager or something like that. And um, and that really cute little thank you card as well. So thanks for joining me, everyone. Um, I did go a little bit early, but I saw that a few people signed on, which was lovely. Um, if you're watching the replay and or you know, you'd know you like to know more about what you've seen, um, please reach out. As I say, the sparkling, simply sparkling, is a online exclusive item so you won't find it in any catalogue you will need to sign on to the or pop onto the stamping up website to see it um, if you find that difficult um, please reach out just give me a send me a text or message me on facebook or send me a, a call um, and i will help you purchase that one if you find it difficult to to maneuver online but really a fun little set um, great for green kitties uh, anyone really so great. Um, thanks for joining me. I'm going to uh, go and have my shower, have my brekkie, and then um, we'll start the birthday celebrations for mum. Anyway, uh, great to join me. I'll see you all again at the weekend.